2.47 a.m. Always the same time. I shouldn't take those damn pills again. A hot shower. That'll create the magic of sleep. If I try to stay busy, it might actually help me get to sleep. Goddamn insomnia. I'm totally exhausted, but I just can't sleep. A hot drink is what I need. Uh, maybe I'll go to bed and give the sleep thing one more shot. I really need sleep. How hard can it be to fall asleep?
I, uh, I swear I heard something. Good job, Madison. I think you're starting to lose it. The fridge door! I'm sure I closed it. Oh, come on, it, it couldn't have just opened on its own. How on earth did the fridge just open like that? Get it together, girl. You probably just left it open by accident. Look. Going without sleep is driving me crazy. Get up, close the fridge door, go to bed. Simple. I think I'm starting to be seriously scared. There's someone here. There's someone in the apartment. The phone on the desk. I could call for help. The front door. It's the only way out. If I can reach it, I still have a chance. My cell. On the desk. I need to call for help. That letter might be linked to Sean's disappearance. I need to show it to the police. Goddamn reporters! They've been camped outside my house all day. What did I do with Sean? I, I must have done something, but I just can't remember. I'm the origami killer. I black out, and then the murdering starts. I know it's me. I couldn't have hurt him. I love him, I love him with all my heart, but what in God's name did I do when he was on the carousel? I'm exhausted. 
I didn't sleep a wink all night. I'd give anything to know where Sean is now. There's no way back for me if I've done anything to hurt Sean. The origami figure in my hand after my blackout. It's the same one the killer leaves in the hands of his victims. I've never done origami in my life. This doesn't make any sense. It couldn't have been me. I couldn't ever have done that. When the parents came home from church, all their children were gone. They searched and called for them, they cried and begged, but it was all to no avail. The children have never been seen again. What does it mean? Some sort of fairy tale? It looks like the ticket to a locker. I have to get out of here and find out what this ticket is about. This angel on the ticket. I'm sure I've seen it somewhere before. I think I know where this ticket comes from. Someone sent me that letter for a reason. Gonna, gonna have to make it through the crowd. I can't, can't take crowds. Just can't handle it. The luggage lockers. They're on the other side of the station. I, I can't make it. Too many people. Too many people. Jason! Jason, come back! The balloon! Gotta get the balloon! Jason! Jason, Dad's here, son! Jason, 
It's Jason. He's there. He's right there. This time I'll save him. You gotta be kidding. This is driving me crazy. The balloon. Gotta get the balloon. Jason! A nightmare. The whole thing was just a fucking nightmare. Jason... Jason is dead. Made it. I made it. I managed to get through the goddamn crowd. The lockers. Now I've got up line 18, box number 3. The lockers. Now I've got to find the right one. Line 18, box number I took a room in the first motel I saw. The box from the locker. What am I gonna find inside? Gotta open it, and find out what's inside. Am I the one who, who put this box in the locker? I don't remember! A shoebox? What's the connection with Sean's disappearance?
Sean. Where are you? I'm so cold. Dad. Dad. The killer is white, aged between 30 and 45. He doesn't act on impulse, but plans his crimes in a very meticulous fashion. He doesn't have anything personal against the victims. That's why he covers their faces with mud, to make them anonymous. Why does he kill them if he doesn't have anything against them? For him, they're more of an image, a symbol. That's probably why he gives them an origami figure and an orchid as gifts to apologize for what he's done to them. Very interesting. And where does all that get us? The best way of tracking a predator is to be familiar with his behavior. That may be true in novels, but there's a child's life at stake here. Continue, Jaden. Then I studied the geographical distribution of the murders. Generally, a killer commits his first murder near to where he lives, so he has a safe place to flee to if any complications arise. The more confident he becomes, the further he roams from his base. By analyzing the locations where the victims disappeared, I was able to isolate a zone where the killer might live. And, and what size is this, uh, zone? For the moment, about 10 square mile. Ah, oh, great. There must be 10,000 people live in that sort of area. You gonna question them one by one? The more clues we get, the more we can reduce the zone. We can then cross-check it with our list of suspects and identify the killer. One detail attracted my attention. The interval between the time when a victim disappears and the time when the body is found ranges from three to five days. But the rainfall is always at six inches, give or take 10%. What on earth does that mean? All the victims were drowned in rainwater. The killer kills only in the fall when there is plenty of rain. It could be that he puts them in some sort of well or tank that is open to the skies and that fills up with rainwater. The more it rains, the less time the victim has to live. So what's next? There are two suspects whose psychological profile might fit and can be connected to the comfort zone. I'd like to question them. Ah, damn it. We're wasting our time with this bullshit. The killer's out there somewhere and we gotta get off our asses and find him. The killer is no ordinary murderer. He is intelligent, organized, and methodical. You won't find him by patrolling the streets. Tell me, Agent Jaden, did you get your fast experience on the job, or did you just fucking read about it in some school book? I came here to find a killer. And that is exactly what I'm gonna do. With or without your fucking help. Fucking asshole! That's enough! You said it took six inches of rainfall before the victim died. How much time do we have left? If the weather forecasts are right, less than 72 hours. No answer. We waste our time coming here. Maybe we should have a little look inside anyway. There's nobody home.
there is now. I'm not sure that's entirely legal. Call the cops. Looks like Nathaniel Williams is a pretty religious guy. He's a God-fearing idiot, waiting for the end of the world. We questioned him a few months back because he was causing a disturbance in the park. He was ranting and raving. Said he heard voices. Had this idea in his sick little head that I was the Antichrist. I had come to Earth to persecute him. Real twisted. It's stifling in here. Those windows haven't been opened in years. Well, no warrant, no problem for Blake. He thinks his badge entitles him to do whatever he wants. Nathaniel Williams is our prime suspect. He's already been questioned and he lives in the exact geoprofiling zone. All the signs of a mystical obsessive neurosis compounded by a persecution complex. Candles are still lit. He should be back soon. You don't have to be a profiler to see he's not a killer. We're wasting our time here. The guys taking a break from reality hold up here in this crazy apartment. Good timing, Nathaniel. Just the man we're looking for. Angels and ministers of grace defend us. I'm Agent Norman Jaden, FBI. I'd like to ask you a few questions. As God is my witness, I haven't done anything. I'm innocent. Relax. Nobody's accusing you of anything. We just want to talk. Nathaniel, do you remember where you were last Tuesday at 4.30 p.m.? Here? I was here. I was praying. All day. Was there anybody with you? No. No, I was alone. Why all the crucifixes? Are you afraid of something? The hour is nigh, and the wrath of God shall strike men down. I am preparing for the end of the world. Where do you work, Nathaniel? You have a job? My sole occupation is praying to the all-merciful Lord for the salvation of humanity. 
What about the voices, Nathaniel? Do you still hear the voices? We know who talks to you, don't we, Nathaniel? Or we both know who talks to you. Don't speak that name. What does he Blake, say to you, Nathaniel? What are you doing? I can't talk about it. You mustn't talk about it. He orders I've you got to, go to and do find something. New prey, doesn't he? He needs more and more. I guess Blake's trying to break him, but what good is a confession if he does? No. You mustn't mention him. You'll bring him here. He told you to go and find that kid in the park. The voice is torn. That's enough. You all Leave night him long. alone. You wanted them to stop, didn't you, Nathaniel? Stop. Stop! That's enough! So you obeyed them to make them stop. Carter, you that boy with you when you you're ground here, him. Mine? Isn't that right? No! Stop! Stop! You killed them, didn't you, Nathaniel? Are you gonna confess, you bastard? You are the Antichrist. Put down the gun, I Nathaniel. I you to your father in hell. He is the son of Satan. He was sent to Earth to destroy shoot, us. For Christ's sake, shoot! Calm down, Nathaniel. Nobody here wants to hurt you. Put the gun down. Concentrate on my voice, Nathaniel. Listen only to my voice. Team, you shall regret confronting the emissary of the Lord. You shall know divine power. Keep calm. Everything is going to be fine, Nathaniel. Christ, all powerful. Defend us in our battle with the forces of evil. Protect us from the cunning and wiles of the demon. May God Almighty manifest the power of his empire. And may divine power cast Satan and all the other spirits that prowl the world in search of souls into the darkest depths of hell. Now gently put the gun down on the floor. Back away, slowly. Now drop the gun. Drop it, Nathaniel. Put your hands on your head. Turn around. In the name of the Lord, I exorcise thee, Satan. Okay, freak, the show's over. You're under arrest. Pretty damn cool under the circumstances. I would've just shot him. A gun isn't the answer to every problem, Blake. <laughs> Maybe not, but most of the time it helps. As we're free for the moment, we'll love it. Good old in here in my pocket, just in case. Susan Bowles, mother of the origami killer's latest victim. Maybe she knows something about the circumstances surrounding her son's death. Baby screaming and no answers? Don't like the look of this. No answer. Baby screaming inside. Not a promising start.
Anybody home? Mrs. Bowles? Doesn't seem to be anyone. Jeez. Parents today. Going out and leaving a poor little kid like that. Hello, little cutie. Oh? You looking for your mama? Hmm. I don't know why, but I got a bad feeling about this. Oh, Jesus. <sighs> Come on, I have to search the house. Maybe it's not too late. This letter. Holy fuck. I hope she... I hope she hasn't... Come on, I have to search the house. Maybe it's not too late. Oh, hang on, baby. First, I gotta find Mama. Mrs. Bowles? Mrs. Bowles, are you there? Mrs. Bowles! Mrs. Bowles, can you hear me? Wake up! Wake up! She's lost a load of blood. Lucky I happened to be on the scene. I'm gonna call an ambulance. No, I... I don't want to go to the hospital. Please. Okay. You got something around here I can dress this wound with? Yeah. I think so. Okay. Don't move. I'll be right back. Hmm. Need some bandages and disinfectant. Gotta be here somewhere. She's losing blood. I got. Let's see. I need this, and this, and this. I'm here for you, Susan. You'll be all right. I'll take care of you. Stay with me, Susan. Susan, do you hear me? Susan, stay with me. Can you hear me? Stay with me. Okay, come on. There, I done what I can. That should stop the bleeding. Well, luckily, the wounds aren't too deep. Hey, how are you feeling? My baby. My baby needs me. Right. You stay there. I'll take care of the baby. Okay? Do you know what to do? With a baby, I mean. I'm a private eye. There's nothing I can't do. <laughs> Emily. Gotcha. Mommy will live for now. Let's see how Junior's doing. Hi there, Emily. So, what seems to be the problem, huh? Oh! Going by the smell? I got a pretty good idea. Uh, 
Okay. How do you do this again? There you go, fresh new baby. <laughs> that should feel better. Right, Emily? Hmm? Hey, what's the matter? I thought we solved the problem. Why is she crying? I'll ask Susan. She'll know what to do. Of course. Now I know why you're crying, my little peachy poo. Mother shall be to the rescue. I guess I better warm this thing up. Just tilt this ball a little bit so you don't choke. Oh, good job, Emily. Hmm? You're feeling good now, right? <laughs> now, I'm gonna rock you very gently so you can have a nice little snooze. Right, that's about the limit of my maternal powers. Poor kid. Life ain't gonna be easy for her. Thanks for looking after my baby. I didn't want to leave her. I just couldn't cope anymore. Just... Not having Jeremy around. He was such a good boy. Can't understand why anyone would want to hurt him. Do you take care of this baby on your own? Doesn't Jeremy's father live with you anymore? He disappeared. The day after Jeremy. I don't know what happened to him. Maybe, maybe he couldn't take it. Ever since I've had to look after Emily all on my own and I couldn't do it anymore. 
I understand. Did your husband say anything before he disappeared? Did he leave a note or something? No. He left the house without a word and... There was just a cell phone. A cell phone? Yeah, I, I found a cell phone in his dresser. I'm sure it wasn't his. I'd never seen it before. I tried to turn it on, but it didn't work. Do you still have it? Yeah, it's, uh, it's in a drawer in the living room. You can have it if you'd like. I'm sure it's of more use to you than to me. Do you have any family or anybody to help you? Yeah, my mother. I didn't want to ask her for anything. We don't really get along. But I guess I'm out of options. Well, look after yourself. And Emma. I will. I promise. In a drawer in the living room. That's what Susan said. Good luck, Emily. You take care of you. 